Additive Color, Part 1. So our eyes are sensitive to uh, light in a certain range of wavelengths and corresponding uh, frequencies. So we uh, call that the visible spectrum. Uh, with sound waves, we often talk about the frequency or the pitch of the sound. Uh, with light, uh, usually uh, we use wavelength instead. Um, now, the different uh, wavelengths of light have associated with them uh, particles, which are called photons. So the longest uh, wavelengths, uh, we associate those with red uh, photons. We'll see in a moment why those are considered red. And then um, somewhat shorter would be yellow, uh, then green, then blue. So when we look at the spectrum, uh, like we see here um, on the left, uh, the part of the spectrum, which is the longest wavelengths, the red photons are on one end, and then the shortest ones, the blue ones, are on the other end. And uh, for even longer uh, photons, uh, we're in the infrared and our eyes are not sensitive to those wavelengths. And on the other side, uh, the even shorter photons uh, are in the ultraviolet and also we're not sensitive to those. Now, you can see from uh, this uh, association of uh, wavelength with uh, different colors of photons that this is somewhat analogous to uh, in sound, different notes. So uh, we hear notes of uh, different frequencies and we see photons of uh, different uh, wavelengths. Now it's uh, unfortunately a little bit more complicated than just uh, associating a color to a wavelength, or I should say it's more complicated than associating a wavelength to a color. Because when we see a color for, say, an object, that um, spectrum that we're receiving doesn't have just a single type of photon. It has a mixture, and we call that mixture the uh, spectrum. So uh, something which is a green object, we won't just see green photons. We'll see uh, a mixture of all parts of the spectrum. And this uh, introduces some interesting uh, visual effects, uh, the first one being uh, metamerism. So it may be that when we see something as being yellow, it's possible that we're seeing true yellow, which means we're just seeing uh, yellow photons. But it's actually more likely that when we're seeing yellow, we're seeing a mixture of red photons and green photons. So these two spectra that I'm showing here uh, could actually not just both look like yellow, but they could look identically the same yellow. Uh, the other interesting thing is there are some colors that we uh, obviously see, and yet when we separate the spectrum uh, and see the different photons, we don't actually associate any particular photon with the color magenta uh, or with the color white. So uh, those are examples of non-spectral colors. Now, to explain the connection between uh, the spectrum and the colors we perceive, uh, what was uh, developed uh, years ago was the trichromatic theory. And the trichromatic theory says that uh, when we perceive a color uh, from a spectrum, it's as if we have these uh, three guys uh, in our eye, uh, we'll call them uh, Ron, Greg, and Biff, and uh, they are uh, sensitive to different parts of the spectrum. So uh, Ron is sensitive to the red and yellow part of the spectrum, uh, Greg uh, to the middle part of the spectrum, the yellow-green cyan, and Biff is sensitive to cyan and blue. Now, 
let's see how this works for, uh, for example, metamorphism. Uh, now, when we see yellow photons, then uh, Ron and Greg are both excited by yellow photons, but Biff is not. So, uh, when that occurs, we perceive that as yellow. But you notice that it's possible to excite Ron and Greg without using any yellow photons if we uh, have a mix of red photons and green photons. So uh, there's cases where we see true yellow, which is just purely yellow photons. Uh, the most common example is uh, sodium lamps. Uh, sometimes you see these in parking lots. They're a bright yellow and uh, if you look at the spectrum, they happen to be uh, primarily composed of yellow photons. But it's much more common for you to see yellow by seeing a mixture of red and green. In fact, on a TV or a computer monitor, uh, there are red and green pixels, and when those are simultaneously turned on, just because they're very close together, you don't see the individual red and green pixels, you see the blending of them as yellow. And here's a, an example with some um, red and green LED lights, so uh, just shining them in the speaker, and when uh, both of the lights are turned on, you see this uh, pale yellow uh, color. Now, getting back to that analogy about the ear and the eye, uh, there's actually a very distinct difference uh, between how the ear senses sound waves and how the eye senses light waves, because when you play uh, two notes, you hear them as separate notes. You don't uh, perceive it as being the note in the middle. On the other hand, uh, when we have uh, red photons and green photons and we see them simultaneously, uh, we actually do perceive that as being uh, the color which is of the photons in between. So the uh, ear is actually more discerning uh, to mixtures of frequencies than the eye is to um, mixtures of different wavelengths. Another uh, thing we can understand using trichromatic theory is uh, these non-spectral colors. So when uh, we see magenta, uh, that is when Ron and Biff are both excited, but Greg is not. And when we look at the spectrum, there's no single type of photon that will simultaneously excite Ron and Biff. Uh, the only way to do that is with a blend of red and blue photons. So we can uh, see this in this uh, Maxwell disk. So we have a disk that's painted um, red and blue, and when it spins rapidly, you see the uh, two simultaneously, and that is magenta. Uh, this also tells us that uh, we have to have three guys. Uh, two of them would not be enough to, to see magenta, because if we had two which were, say, sensitive to uh, green and red, and the other one to blue and green, uh, when they're both excited, uh, they would see green, and that means that uh, a mixture of red and blue photons would look uh, green to us. This was one of the uh, things that determined uh, the basis of trichromatic theory even before we had the biological understanding of uh, how the eye works. Now, the last of the um, non-spectral uh, colors we'll look at is uh, white. So when uh, all three of them are excited, uh, that is when we perceive the color white. Uh, here's another one of these spinning disc examples. So uh, this one has uh, three colors, um, red, green, blue. And you see that when it's uh, spinning, when we see the three simultaneously, that is perceived as white. There's, I have another similar example that uh, this is a ball which uh, has three LEDs that 
flash rapidly uh, red, green, and blue. And when it's not spinning, you see the three um, LEDs uh, simultaneously. Uh, when it is spinning, you can uh, distinguish the different ones. Let's just see how that works. So um, here it is. Looks pretty much white, but you see when it's uh, spinning, you can notice uh, that it's actually uh, three different uh, flashing uh, colors. So, in uh, summary, uh, visible light is composed of uh, photons of different wavelengths. Those wavelengths happen to be in the range of 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Uh, trichromatic theory explains the connection between uh, the spectrum of the light that enters our eye and the color that we uh, perceive uh, from that spectrum. Uh, yellow is seen when uh, the spectrum is composed uh, primarily of yellow photons uh, or if it's a mix of red and green photons. Uh, magenta is a non-spectral color so we only see that uh, with a blend and that happens when we see a mix of red and blue photons. In other words, there are no magenta photons. Uh, white is another non-spectral color and we see that when it's a mixture of uh, red, green, and blue. In other words, uh, all the way across the spectrum, uh, when we have a mix of everything, uh, then we see that as white.